Well, welcome everyone to Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game. I'm your host, Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money colored commentator. On today's show, can you trust the information from the Social Security Administration? Part five in our series on Social Security, America's number one retirement plan with nationally recognized Social Security expert, Brian Doherty. Well, Brian... Before we get into should I trust them or not, I want to make sure that everybody, if you know how to get out to socialsecurity.gov, you should get your numbers, pull those down, collect the 62, your full retirement age, and Sage 70. Go out to Brian's site, gettingpaidtowait.com. When you get out there, easy to plug in, yep. put your numbers in. If you're even, actually, it'll automate you, if you have restrictive, you can take the restrictive application and you're qualified to take it, it'll automatically tell you that. Absolutely. I yeah. love that. Yep. So you're going to see maximum benefits, how to use it, how to play this game. This is the cornerstone of your retirement plan. It's totally worth doing. And Brian's got a book with the same name, Getting Paid to Wait. You can go to hop out on Amazon.com, pick up the book. Most retirement books are kind of heady, a little bit too much statistics. This is an easy read. It's about Social Security. It's about tying down your number one benefit for the rest of your life. I say you need to read this and get a good understanding of what's being told so that you can really make a good assessment on how you should take your benefit and, especially if you're talking to Social Security Administration, if they're telling you the truth. Now, Brian, when I do a title like you know, it's the Social Security giving us the right information and the right truth. I'm just so discouraged to hear an expert like you say the answer is no. The answer is no, not all the time. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when they give out that misinformation, it could end up costing you a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, this has happened to me personally a few times, Steve, where I've gotten information and people that I've advised in terms of a claiming strategy, they've gone in and a number of times Social Security says you cannot do that. And yes, you can. But recently, there was a, a news article that came out about an internal audit that social, mm -hmm. the Social Security Administration did on itself on its customer service people. And what they found, they look at the advice they were giving to widows and widowers. And it turns out they weren't giving them complete advice in terms of what they could do. And as a result, it ended up costing them a lot of money. Sometimes, you know, up to $10,000 a year, $100,000 over, over 10 years. In fact, when you aggregate all of it, they were underpaid this particular sample size by about $140 million. Steve, Unbelievable. Let me, let me give you, show you quickly what, what they were doing or what they weren't doing. So mm -hmm. here I have Mary, who's got a survivor benefit of $2,300, right? Her husband died. That's his benefit. She could collect that as a survivor benefit. She has her own benefit of $2,200. Now, on the face of it, it would seem like a no-brainer. You take the higher benefit, the $2,300. This is what Mary does on the top line. She's 64 years old. She waits until she's 66 so she can get that full survivor benefit. We included a couple years of retroactive COLA credits, one of our previous shows. So that increases it to $2,416 per month. Now, Mary goes on for, you know, for the next four years, it goes up a little bit because of the 2.5% annual COLA increase, we assumed. At age 70, she's getting 2667. Now, at age 75, it's grown to 3017. And at age 80, it's $3,414. $3, okay, seems like, yeah, that, that was a good move. But here's what they didn't tell Mary. In, in this case, this is what Mary should have done. Yeah, she should have claimed a survivor benefit at age 66. And for the next three years, done exactly that, continued to collect it. But at age 70, Mary could have switched to her own benefit now, okay? The survivor benefit maxes out at age 66. Mary's own benefit maxes out at age 70. In fact, for every year after 66, it grows by 8%, plus coal adjustments, Steve. So Social Security was not telling Mary to make this switch from 2667 to 3368. And Steve, that amount of money on an annual basis, that difference was $8,412 mm -hmm. for one year. They shortchanged her $8,412. Now, if we go to age 70, this amount grows to $3,810. And look at the difference now has grown to $9,500. And now if we go out to age 80, $4,311, that difference has grown to $10,764 just for mm -hmm. one year. And Steve, if you were to take all those years and aggregate them, Mary was shortchanged on $105,000 over that 10-year period of time. Now, Steve, 
women overwhelmingly outlive men. Mm -hmm. And widowed women, have, widowed women over the age of 65 have some of the highest poverty rates and highest near poverty rates in this country. They can ill afford to forego mm -hmm. $105,000 over a 10-year mm -hmm. period of time. Social Security is not doing them any favors. Mm -hmm. And look, you know, if any financial service company that we worked with were to do something like this, shortchange their, their clients or give them misinformation, it cost them $105,000, $140 million over whatever, a 10 or 15-year period period of time, Steve, that financial services company would be subjected to all kinds of what class action lawsuits. Mm. The government regulatory agencies mm -hmm. would be all over them. They'd probably find them tens of millions, hundreds of millions, maybe a billion dollars in fines. If they don't tolerate that kind of behavior from the financial services companies, why do they tolerate it from their mm. own employees? And here's the other thing that kind of ticks me off. Social Security hasn't decided what they're going to do yet. Mm -hmm. What do you mean you haven't decided what you're going to do yet? You make those people whole. You pay them the $140 million, whatever, that you shortchanged them. That's what you should do. A financial services company did it. That's the least that you would require them to do. If that's what mm -hmm. you require financial services companies to do, why don't you require it of your own, yourself mm -hmm. and your own employees? Okay. Now, I, I have to say even Steve Savant here, a little, a little sketchy. She was going to, traditionally, by the time she hit 70, she'd just take her husband's benefit and go. But during this time, when she was taking her other benefit, the survivor, the benefit. survivor benefit, she's taking it, she deferred hers. Her own benefit. Her own benefit, which was then accumulating behind the scenes. Exactly. All right, all right. So then, when she switches to her benefit, because her benefit far out exceeds her husband's survivor benefit, right? right? So this is a major mistake here. I am. I, this is what I'm hearing now. Yeah. This is a whole nother game here. Uh, I mean, restrictive application is one thing. This is everybody can play this game. Right. So this is a major issue here. We need to be able to, and your software will tell them that. The software, well, only widows and widowers can play this game, right. but they have a lot of flexibility. In fact, they have the most flexibility and the most options to make it easiest for them to maximize their social security benefit, which is what you do here. Because while you're waiting to do this, you receive all of this income from mm -hmm. the survivor benefit. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's, I can't believe that Social Security wasn't letting these widows, especially the majority of them were probably mm -hmm. widows, know that they could dramatically increase their income by doing this at age mm -hmm. 70. It's, that's that's a huge. Yeah, we, maybe we should have retitled this segment. You know, the women's issue of Social Security. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, because this is a huge issue. You're bringing up something that I'm certain, and, and remember, 87 percent of the time, females survive their male counterparts in exactly. a marriage. Exactly. So we're talking about serious money. And by the way, how much more money? That's a Enough, that could make a difference in your lifestyle. A huge difference, you know. And again, widowed women over the age of 65 are one of the most vulnerable groups mm -hmm. out there. They struggle to maintain their quality of life and standard mm -hmm. of living the longer they live. And here, in this particular case, they shortchanged one of them by $105,000. It's well, not right. When I think about your, you know, you're, you're, you got a bachelor's in accounting, you have an MBA from Syracuse on in finance. finance. I mean, you're doing the math here. I mean, I don't really think I'm going to get the same pedigree at the administration, okay? Right. Social Security Administration. Right. So, I really need to make sure, and if you're an advisor just happened to watch our consumer show, well, I plead with you to learn this whole system. If you haven't, maybe take Brian's course, you need to get in there and get this done because you're going to make a major, major lifestyle change for a lot of these survivors, most of them probably women. Steve, let me show you. All right, th this is the, the difference mm -hmm. here. This is where they gave up $105,000. But one, let me show you a case that I've experienced multiple times uh, myself in real life because I advise clients in terms of how they should claim mm -hmm. their benefits. Here, I brought back the chart from the restricted application mm -hmm. show. I'm not going to go over it all again. But what I, what I do want to, I sit down with clients. You know, they use my calculator. They get the output. They take it into Social Security. Okay, they do the restricted application. And what ends up happening, it's all about this spousal benefit. Benefit, mm -hmm. Right. This particular couple could make an additional fifty three thousand six hundred sixty four dollars just by claiming the spousal benefit. This has happened multiple times to me. Client goes in, has the output from my calculator. Social Security office says this is what I want to do. I want to do restricted application. Social Security says you can't do that anymore. And th they get confused. You can't do the file and suspend, but you can do the restricted application if you were born before January 2nd, 1954. They tell the client you can't do that. The client thinks this is Social Security. They know what they're talking about. The client leaves, comes back, either calls up the financial advisor that I was working with or calls me directly, and they're mad. Mm -hmm. Like, Brian, you said I could mm -hmm. do this. I go into Social Security. They say I can't. I go, they're wrong. 
How can they be wrong? They're Social Security. Mm -hmm. That's the Social Security Administration. I go, I know, they're yeah. wrong. It happens all the time. I, I, I make a copy of the law where it says they're grandfathered and they can do it. I said, go back in there, ask for a manager, and tell them that, mm -hmm. that you, you should be able to do this. And they don't want to do it because they don't want to be embarrassed again. But I, I, I strongly encourage them. They mm -hmm. go back, they find the manager. Manager says, oh, yeah, you can do this. I'll set it up for you today. But if they didn't do that, if they didn't know me, Steve, they would have lost out on 50 $53,664. This has happened multiple times. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, Social Security should know this. Otherwise, it's costing people a lot of money. We work in, with financial services companies. They mm -hmm. would not tolerate that from financial services companies. Why do they tolerate it from their own employees? I don't know. Widows and survivors, I mean, this is a huge issue. And I, again, I would have thought maybe staying with my deceased husband's benefit but my benefit was accumulating and it was actually superseded by a lot of money yeah this is why if you're going to hold yourself out as an advisor and hold yourself out that you're so you're a retirement expert and you don't know this i don't think you're doing a cor you're not building the cornerstone and the foundation for a really successful retirement without knowing all the ins and outs and the benefits that are available for your client absolutely and steve again if you use my calculator this will do all this for you i love that you'll I have it that. there and you know you can just bring it in and say yeah i i can do this i know i can do this let's set this up and if you meet somebody at social security says you can't say let me talk to the manager let me talk to somebody who's right. been here for 10 or 15 years because they probably know go out to brian's site getting paid to wait.com all you have to do is go to your social security.gov account pull down the numbers plug him in easy to do you will benefit time and again if you have time read his book right off of amazon.com you can order it getting paid to wait it's worth doing a little homework as a consumer before you learn how to golf before you learn how to build bridge <laughs> let's learn this it's our money we might as well maximize it i want to thank brian for sharing our series on social security america's number one retirement plan and keep in mind before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always check with your tax consultant, legal counsel, or financial advisor, which in my case may not be enough to, to may not be able to check with these guys, but assure of guys like Brian Doherty who know what they're talking about in Social Security. You've been watching Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game. Oh